Right, sorry everyone, I managed to cut myself off there. So um, I'm just going to start again. So going back to the desensitisation, if you go onto YouTube and type in firework sounds and get yourself a couple of videos of playing the firework sounds and start getting your dog used to hearing the sounds of the... I'll start again here because I'm having technical problems today. Sorry everybody. So starting off with desensitisation. So if you go onto YouTube and um, type in fireworks and get yourself a couple of videos that have got the firework sounds on there and the different sounds you want the crackles and, and the bangs and the pops and the fizzy sounds and also the whizzy that um that kind of noise before it pops um, before it bangs as well if you make sure you've got a couple of videos that cover all of those different sounds and, and have it on in your phone and just start playing these sounds as low as you possibly can. So the volume wants to be as low as possible um, the first time that you try this. And your dog wants to be distracted to do it. Thank you, thank you, Jan, you can hear me now. So your dog wants to be distracted while you're doing this. So you can distract your dog in, in whatever way you think is best. So you could maybe have your phone in your pocket when you go for a walk. Um, the dog is distracted, you know, while he's on the lead next to you and taking in everything else that's going on around it. But you've got these firework sounds going off in your pocket and your dog's probably not going to react to it very much because there's too, many, too much other things going on. Uh, other ways is maybe when your dog's on a bone or, or on a chew or eating or, you know, in the garden or playing with you or something like that. So just anything to distract the dog while you start to play these firework sounds. Now we want the dog to be able to hear the sounds but we don't want your dog to be completely freaking out. Okay so we're looking for for the ears to, to prick up and maybe maybe they're just a head looking around and then carrying on what the dog was doing beforehand. So if you go in for a walk he'll hear the noise and then carry on with what what the dog was doing beforehand and if if the dog is, is starting to show too much signs of stress, then the volume is too loud. So you need to turn the volume down and you know start at a lower volume. And if you start doing that and just get your dog used to those sounds very, very gradually and then increase the sound from there, that's the start of the desensitization process, okay? So you're slowly gonna start getting your dog used to hearing the sounds. Um, while it's distracted okay so that's the first thing to think about um, the second thing that I'm I'm using at the moment is is drops and um, flower remedies and aromatherapy now I've, I've tried three different products okay the first product that I've used I got from overseas and I got it from backfloweradvice.co.uk and I got mixture 100 which is specifically for, for dogs and fireworks, okay? It costs 34 pounds. It took about five or six days to arrive. So it's probably gonna be a little bit too late in, in, you know, in, the, in the season to order this now if you're based in the UK. So an alternative would be to get um, back rescue remedies, which you can get from Holland and Barrett, or maybe you can order it online with Amazon Prime and it might be here for tomorrow. And that's about 13 pounds for a bottle. Now it's a different mixture to the one that I've used, which, which cost a little bit more, um, but it is similar and hopefully it may help a little bit. And you want to be giving this to your dog on a little piece of bread, um, so the dog's gonna ingest the drops, okay? Um, and they're safe. If your dog has got any medical issues that are sort of neurological, it might be worthwhile just phoning up your vet and asking, is it okay if I give my dog these drops? But the research that I've done into it and the advice that I have been given from the expert is that it's very safe to give your dog these drops, okay? So four drops, six times a day, or you can do six drops four times a day, um, ideally about five days before the fireworks start. And just on a little piece of bread or a piece of ham or something like that, and then the dog eats it. Um, and store the bottle in a cool, dark place away from electrical um, objects and away from um, mobile phones. So one bottle should last you through, you know, through a, through a, a period of fireworks. So like I say, um, I use backflowerbackflowerdvice.co.uk mixture 100. It cost me 34 pounds. 
um, and um, a couple of my clients have already started to see some positive re results with that already. The alternative is the um, Rescue Remedy. Another product which I've been using is something called Caroline Ingraham Anti-Anxiety and Fear Spray. Now I use this spray when I'm working with dogs that are very, very nervous and very, very fearful. Um, and I will just spritz it in the air just around the dog so just spritz it over the dog two or three spritzes and it take it smells quite grassy um, this is Caroline Ingraham anti-anxiety spray and I used it yesterday on a dog for the beginning of um, desensitization and the dog was falling asleep so that's another product that you could also consider trying um, and that's 17 pounds so though that's um, the next sort of level of advice that I'm giving is bringing in flower remedies. I'm not a fan of the plugins. I don't think they're really effective enough. The dog isn't in actually ingesting it and I, I just don't know that that has helped anybody. If, it, if you've used them and they work for you, then, then fine, carry on using them. But my experience has been using something a bit more potent and a bit more specific and actually ingesting it into the dog. Okay. The third thing I want to talk about is massage. Now, I know a lot of people want to, to comfort their dogs and give their dogs reassurance um, during a difficult time. And it's something that I just don't feel works and I still stand by that. I don't think that we can kind of, um, you know, physically comfort a dog out of fear with, with patting and sort of reassuring um, affection. However, I do think that we can help dogs learn to relax through therapeutic massage um, and therapeutic massage is very different to the type of massage that you know the type of affection that you'd just be giving your dog you know for you know for, for just you know giving it a bit of love it, it's a different type of feeling and it's a different type of sensation on the body and it's not going to arouse the dog in any way in fact it's actually going to to have the opposite effect and it's actually going to help the dog to, to calm and it's going to promote relaxation in the dog. Now this is something that I'm advising people to get, get their dogs used to so in the run up to fireworks so you can all start this now um, so that when the fireworks actually start they're quite familiar with what's going to happen. So it does involve um, having an open mind and it does involve if you've ever done any meditation or if you've ever done any yoga or any mindfulness, it does involve you as the owner just becoming aware of yourself and tuning into your own body. Um, and if you've done meditation and stuff like that before, then that's really great because you'll be familiar with that. We want to basically just try to, to, to de declutter our minds, turn the phone off, close the curtains, make a nice calm relaxing environment for yourself and your dog and take a few minutes to just sort of compose yourself and try to get inside your body and just become really in tune with your own body first that's the first part of this then the second part of it is to give the dog the massage and it's a very very slow massage and i'm going to hopefully be able to show you this with with um, a dog that i've got here misty Okay, so I hope you can all still hear me. So I've got, I've got Misty here and um, I'm going to show you how I do this massage. So, so get, a, get a cushion and, and have your dog lay down. Now if you've got a big dog, you want, to be, um, you want to be doing this on the floor. If you've got a large breed dog, you want to be um, sitting on the floor with your dog. If you've got a smaller dog, you can you can do this on a cushion. Um, now, I hope that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to tilt this down. So we want to be, so you can see my hands. So we want to be giving really, really slow strokes on the side of the dog's body from, from sort of head to tail and as slow as you can possibly imagine, okay? 
Um, you can't go slow enough, actually. The trouble I think people have with this is they, is they go too fast. And I think if a dog is anxious and you're, and you're patting it very quickly and saying, it's okay, it's okay, calm down, calm down, calm down, I think that makes it worse. But the deep therapeutic massage, which is pulling the, so you're gonna put a little bit of pressure, apply a little bit of pressure onto the dog's body so you're actually stretching the skin and you'll be working the, the fascial network underneath the skin and this is what promotes the relaxation in the dog. So it's, it's supposed to be a nice relaxing experience for you and your dog. And if your dog is, is a wired dog and doesn't really know how to relax, this will help it in general overall. Um, I, I'm just going to tilt my camera a little bit more so you can see kind of how, how slow Good girl. So it wants to be as slow as you can possibly do. Okay. On the side of the body and just keeping in tune with yourself and just keeping aware of your own posture and making sure your shoulders are down and making sure that you're, you're constantly trying to, to center yourself and, and tune into your body and you're getting your dog used to being touched. And if you can see just how slowly I'm stroking Misty, I'm going really, really slowly. And after a while, you should notice a change in your dog's breathing. You should notice the breathing becomes deeper um, and, and further down into the body and slower. So anxious dogs, when they're very you know, restless, their breathing is fast and it's high up in the chest. But when dogs are really deeply relaxed, their breathing slows right down and you can see it further down in the abdomen. Um, and practice this, practice this every day, twice a day with your dog before firework season and think of it as a sort of massage remedy for, for, for you and your dog where your dog is getting used to being um, stroke like this because this is gonna stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system which is the rest and digest nervous system of the dog and it's going to promote calm and it's going to help them learn how to relax. So as slow as you possibly can um, and try to have your dog facing away from you um, and you can keep a collar on them and if, you know, if they want to get up you can just gently encourage them to lay back down again and I'm stretching the surface of the skin and I'm pressing in fairly hard with my hands so I'm actually stretching the fur, stretching the skin, and then this is affecting the fascial network underneath the skin, which is gonna promote the um, relaxation in the dog. So this is just a lovely thing that we can do for dogs um, to help them how to relax. And my, my theory and, and my um, experience is that if we can help dogs how to relax, that you know, if we can, if you can get your dog used to this kind of massage and this kind of relaxation, then when the fireworks actually start, I'm hoping that your dog will allow you to 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 touch it like this and to massage it like this, and to help it relax during that very difficult time. So if you can practice this as much as possible, your dog's going to get used to it. And actually, one of my clients said to me that after a few days of doing this, her dog is now pestering her for her daily massage. Now, I don't normally encourage um, dogs to pester for affection, but for dealing with this, you know, for dealing with really quite awful stress and trauma, I'm happy if the dog is actually looking for that you know, come and help, come and relax me. And now that particular dog is completely, you know, really chilled out during the fireworks that have happened so far. So you've got to get your dog used to this. And the key thing is do it slowly and just try to try to make it a sort of meditative experience for you and for your dog and get your dog used to being touched in this way. So I, I always give affection to, to dogs slowly. I, I, I always like to do it slowly because I just think it promotes calm and I think it promotes relaxation. And this is just a lovely thing to do. Fireworks or not, I just think this is a lovely thing to do. But if you've got a nervous, anxious dog um, that's particularly restless or you know struggles to relax, this type of massage 
will help your dog learn how to relax and it will it will actually affect the hormones in the dog and it will help to reduce the cortisol and the adrenaline and it will promote more of a restful experience for you and uh, for you and for your dog so that um, so that is the massage side of things that I wanted to talk about the next thing I want to talk about is you and you know us and and how we project onto our dogs now my dogs are fine with fireworks but I'm what I was worried about fireworks a couple of weeks ago I started to feel a bit worried about animals I started to get a bit worried about horses you know um, because they're left outside and I started to worry about all the dogs that were going to be getting stressed and I think you know dogs are so in tune to us they're so aware of our, our, our feelings and our um, uh, brain signals you know and our energy that if we are feeling worried if we're worrying about something our dogs are going to pick up on that so I think a large part of this is for us to just try to have a um, if, if you can't be positive at least just try and be neutral and try not to fear the worst I know the 5th of November is coming but try not to fear and have this worry and panic in your head because I think your dogs are going to be picking up on it and I think they're going to be worrying that there's something wrong um, you know before anything has even started so just be be mindful of your own thoughts um, and, and by the way Misty is just completely you know zonked out here as I'm, I'm can, continuing to stroke her really gently really slowly sorry yeah be mindful of your own thoughts and try to have a you know a let's see what happens approach to this you know you never know you might actually with the advice that I'm giving you today you never know things might be a little bit better so try not to fear the worst and just try try not to let those worrying thoughts come into your mind okay another thing is calming signals so we can give calming signals to our dogs if you look worried if you if you have panic in your face and if you're going oh my god these fireworks and oh my god and you know if you if you're if you're showing worry and panic and even the slightest little um, expression of that in your facial muscles your dog's going to be looking to you for, for guidance and if you show fear then your dog's going to think there's something to worry about if you can pretend that everything is okay yawn give calming signals be like oh i'm so tired and blinky and have a soft face and you know struggling to keep your eyes open because there's no danger there's no threat whatsoever so you don't need to be alert if you look alert your dog is going to think that there's a problem so just give off those those calming signals to your dog as i'm doing this i'm realizing my shoulders have tensed up again so i need to check myself and just reset my shoulders and just try to get into that relaxed posture so you're quite important in this too and be mindful that your dog is picking up on how you're feeling even before the 5th of November um, other things to think about is the environmental stuff so close the curtains um, you know if you need to have a safe place for your dog have a safe place you know make a little den put a blanket over um, you know have somewhere safe where the dog can go um, you make sure your dog has got a microchip and if you are taking your dog out for walks do it in the daytime when there's less chance of fireworks popping off make sure your dog's got an ID tag make sure your back garden is safe and there's no chance of escaping you could take the dog out if you need to do wee wees at night time take it out on a lead um, and you know try if you can just try and avoid the moments when, when um, the fireworks are popping off so that's just some advice about sort of practicalities of things if you start doing um, the massage um, and if you start desensitizing your dog to the sounds you can then incorporate them together so you can be doing the massage and then you can turn the sounds on so you can put the sounds on YouTube um, and you can start to get your dog used to being massaged therapeutically whilst hearing the noise and this is going to be preparation for when the when the real event happens but oh you know what when when this noise comes I lie down and I get a lovely lovely deep therapeutic massage so and then you slowly just increase the volume and actually when I did this on a session yesterday um, we started off on like I, I guess volume one and then by the end of the session I, it was on maximum volume I couldn't turn it up anymore and the dog was just sleeping all the way through it so you know 
I think we can make changes. I think we have to be. I think we have to be positive. I think we have to be open-minded. Sometimes I think we have to be aware of ourselves and what messages we're giving to our dogs. And if we're projecting fear and worry into them, then then that's not going to help either. If your dog is very extreme, and I mean really extreme, you know, and you're worried about the condition of your dog's heart, go to your vets. Your vets can prescribe you something which is the equivalent of diazepam. I think it might be Xanax. And this will actually be a muscle relaxant for the dog. And you know what, if, if some dogs will die from, from, the, from the stress um, on the body at firework season. And if you, if you were worried about your dog, go to the vet and get something. Because if it's gonna help through and keep your dog alive, then that's a good thing. There is something called NutraCalm, which is more of um, a natural um, tablet, which you can get, I believe you can just walk into your local vets. So you don't have to have a prescription and you can ask for them over the counter. And if you go onto NutraCalm, um, and you can search for suppliers and put your details in. They'll email you back immediately with five different um, vets in your local area where you can walk in and you can buy NutriCalm over the counter. I haven't used it myself. I can't say if it works or not. I've had a look at the ingredients. It's different to the ingredients that are in the um, flower remedies um, and I have heard mixed reviews about it. So it may be a case of trying what works for you and your dog, um, but I think that that's something to consider. Um, the other thing, yeah, I think I've covered everything here, so I just want to recap it. So we've got sound desensitisation, which you should absolutely start straight away, and then the drops, um, and then you've got your massage, um, and store, storing your drops in a cool, dark place away from electrical stuff. So you've got your massage, your therapeutic massage and you clearing your mind and getting inside of your body before you start the massage so you you and your dog are really a really 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 calm place and it's supposed to be like an energy connection between you and your dog where you're actually feeding relaxing messages into your dog um your you your thoughts your your signals that you give off to your dog about not stress over stressing and not giving off stressful signals yourself and then the environmental stuff c closing the curtains having the tv on um, taking the dog out for walks in the daytime having an id tag if you need to go to the vets so if i would love to know how you get on with this i'd love to hear your feedback and um, if you found this useful please please give me a like if you haven't already give my page a like um, and please share this too, because the more people that I can help with their dogs during this time, the better. Um, and if you wanted to have a one-to-one -one session to help you work with the, the massage side of things and getting a little bit more into that, I'm happy to do that. We can do video consults um, at the moment. So I hope you've all found this useful. I'm, I'm going to continue massaging little Misty here. She's really chilled out on the so on the um on the cushion next to me let me know how you get on and good luck everybody and i hope this helps you goodbye